Okay, welcome to our, what month are we in? January Board of Education meeting. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. We'll go into our consent agenda. Oh, no, I'm sorry. First hearing of visitors. Does anybody care to talk about anything on the agenda? Okay. So I need a motion to approve our minutes from our regular board meeting budget forum on Janu of January 6, 2021. Our financial matters, which is our bills, our treasurer's report, our budget status report, transfers, um, extracurricular activity fund. We're surplusing two broken desk chairs. That seems a little um, and also included in this is the contracted services for scope for the UPK agreement. And if you noticed in the update, and Patty mentioned it to me earlier, yes, we're in January, but it was back and forth between legal all these months. But they've been in effect since back to when school began. Yeah. And our CSEs. Is there a motion to accept? So moved. Second. second. Any conversation questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have a student presentation, which we all like this part so much. So I'm going to turn this over to you, Dr. Morrow. Well, we're, uh, we're actually going to hand it over to Mr. Rush, who's uh, going to introduce some of the important people we have here to share with us. Um, I'm going to ask that either you want to turn around in your seat. I'm going to move over just because Maybe I'm 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 sitting in front of this, mic, this uh, projector, and it's getting I'm my head. So. And then, uh, Mr. Rush, whenever you're ready, you can go ahead. OK, good evening, everyone. Um, so back in November of 2018, uh, Mrs. Elwood, Mrs. Johnson, Mr. Gamberg, and myself began a dialogue focusing on the idea of Southhold, preserving the past and finding the future, and how we could demonstrate that idea with the student initiative. So this dialogue eventually became our school ambassadors club, who have been responsible for demonstrating the importance of remembering our history with an eye towards the future. Our school ambassadors do so by providing guided tours to alumni, assisting in events like our ribbon cutting ceremony, we create personal connections with new students and their families when they transfer here, and we curate our museum, which you will hear much more about. Despite a global pandemic and our school despite a global pandemic, our school ambassadors are an excellent example of how we've been able to engage our students, provide them with enriching opportunities. With that said, I'd like to now introduce one of our school ambassador advisors, Mrs. Johnson. Thank you. Thanks, Terrence. And thank you, everybody, for letting us into your meeting um, to talk a little bit about our museum exhibit. It's called The Century of Southhold, 1920s to the 2020s, and it was created by the Southhold Ambassadors. And <laughs> there, there they are. Um, the, we have an amazing, amazing group of students that are ambassadors, and we have two really amazing ones today, two representatives, Lane Dominey and Ryan Dierkowski. They're going to talk to you about the specifics, but I'm just going to talk very briefly about why we decided to focus on a museum project this year and also how we did it. And this project started way back in the fall of 2019. Um, <clears throat> you can see us there. We all have our white cotton gloves on and we are digging into the artifacts that have just been archived and cataloged and organized. And we knew even back then that we wanted to celebrate the 100th birthday of 2020 because it was so exciting for all of us to hold these things that were 100 years old in our hands and we knew we wanted to pass that on. So then this year uh, became apparent very quickly that we weren't gonna be able to fulfill our traditional roles of 
greeting the public and giving tours. So we decided to go back to our roots. We knew we were very rich in these treasures and we took them out again and we started up a big jam board where everybody collaborated and um, these kids worked really hard. You can see um, that's Lane there in the middle researching like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so one thing that we stumbled on pretty quickly is this old 1921 yearbook, The Skeptic. And the class motto then was knowledge is power. And we, um, we adopted that readily, um, that motto, knowledge is power. And as soon as we had that motto under our belts, we can go to the next slide, I think. Um, we need divided the exhibit up into two parts. We have the then and the now. So we have stuff from the 1920s and then stuff that we had to sort of scavenger hunt from the 2020s. But we also had some teams focused on regional and national issues like aviation, women's suffrage, prohibition, duck farming. And then another team focused on really local events like what did we have in our Southwold High School archives. And to talk about how that all works in our museum, here is Ryan Gerkowski. He investigated Southwold basketball then and now. Thank you so much, Ms. Johnston. So, Board of Education, my name is Ryan Gerkowski. I'm one of the Southwold ambassadors of the Ambassadors Club. My presentation that I'm showing you today is basketball then and now. So in the 1921, we had the old score basketball cards on the left side. But in the middle, we have the new score cards that will be more interesting. And on the drawer on the right side, we have apparently, I we don't have any old school pictures of basketball teams, but the good news is we have uh, pictures of the new and improve Southwold basketball team. Now I'm turning it over to Lane Domini, who, who will present about the aviary. Lane? Thanks, Ryan. Um, so I focused on more of a regional issue, which was Long Island aviation. And obviously in the 20th century, it played a big role for, in Long Island's history. Um, when you think Long Island aviation, um, I really think of World War II and World War I now because Long Island played such a huge role uh, then um, in military aircraft building and now they play such a big role in um, preserving that history and um, obviously this is seen through uh, many museums you can find on aviation on Long Island but also now we're more focused on commercial aircraft. I'm sure all of you have been to Islip JFK Airport a couple of times um, and I guess that was a really interesting transition that from providing a majority of military aircraft to now focusing primarily on commercial aircraft. Um, over to you, Mrs. Elwood. Thanks, Lane. Um, so the students worked very hard at various teams putting together the two types of exhibits, the physical exhibit in the cases um, with the chores and the artifacts and also the teams that worked on the slideshow. And because they worked so hard, not only were we so glad that the students were able to come down and see the exhibit that's been happening this week, people bringing their classes down, but we've gotten such great publicity and support from Soho TV, from the Suffolk Times, from the school community and administration, from you all. Um, thank you for letting us be here tonight to kind of talk about this uh, accomplishment of, of our club. And we're just incredibly, incredibly grateful for that. So. Um, I want to turn it back over to Ryan and Lane to just talk a little bit about why they're in this club to begin with. They've both been with us since the beginning, and I want to give them an opportunity to say a couple words about why they're glad they are. Go ahead, Ryan. Thank you, Ms. Elwood. So the reason why I joined the Ambassador Club today is that, A, I really am interested of how we get along together in the Ambassador Club. B, um, like Lane said, um, we've been working, actually what Ms. Johnson says, we've been working to the bone for these slideshows for every single one of you for the Board of Education. And um, I hope you really enjoy your um, 
I really hope you enjoyed the museum and other stuff, and take it away, Elaine. Um, so I think the main reason I joined Ambassadors and why I really love the program so much is because I think more than any other club I've been a part of or really heard of, we focus on the past and how our communities, you know, acted in the past and kind of transition to that. Okay, how is our community representing itself and how are the students connecting with the community now? And then how can we do that not only now, but in the future. And I think that's something so unique about this club and what's so lovable about it. Um, obviously, we invite you all to go check out the museum open and a lot of cool artifacts in there. And does anyone have any questions? So I just want to thank you guys for coming down and spending your time, especially uh, Lane and Ryan, you know, uh, Jess and Mary, you guys do a fantastic job, Terrence, you too. Um, you know, but the kids, I had the opportunity to go in and visit them a couple times when they were working in the library with the artifacts. And, you know, they do a fantastic job with taking care and making sure that they're very careful with them, but also learning a great deal about them. And, you know, their interest level is really off the charts. The conversations I had with them were, uh, you know, they were very interesting and enjoyable for me. So thank you to all you guys um, for all of your hard work and, and especially for putting this together and coming down and, and teaching us a little bit about what you're doing, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Morrow. And Board of Education, thank you. <laughs> and I guess, that's it. <laughs> that's, that's a wrap, as they say. Great job. <laughs> if I could just comment for, for those of us board members that have um, family members that have attended this school for generations, we really appreciate it. And I love spending time up there and looking through the artifacts. And I thank all of you for making this happen. And you guys are part of the history now. What has existed for a hundred years? Think about that. You're part of that. That's really special. Okay. Well done. Okay. Thank you guys. Have a good night. They can't Thank see you. Us. No, they can't see us. Don't have, a... have a good night. Get in there. Bye. Good night. I don't want to break it on you. <laughs> We should go up there and look through it again, too. That, the artifacts uh, they've there. been working on it and rotating some stuff, so... Um, oh, that would be good to see. So be more than happy, you know, to, uh, to have everybody up and take a look at it. It's always great to note, too, that those cases were made by our students, and um, it started out with, yeah. I think, funding from the state. Maybe Senator Laval helped us out initially. Uh, the Education Foundation. The Educational Foundation, but um, that it just started with the kids. And, and that display has been there now, what, four or five years? 2015, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the Educational Foundation gave the original support. Yeah, it was, yeah. it's amazing it's stuff. Yeah. So. And it's nice to see that they um, made lemonade out of lemons, yeah. you know, so they couldn't yeah. do the tours and stuff this year, that they really did the research. I would like to see history on, like, you know, I know what these fields were back 100 years and all of that. Yeah. It's neat stuff. It okay. really just changed. <laughs> um, anybody have any old business? <clears throat> that brings us to our superintendent's report. So um, I know on yours there's nothing there, but I added sports on because um, over the last couple of days, um, sports in Suffolk County, if anybody watches the news or reads the newspaper, uh, you know it's changed ever since the governor's announcement on Friday and then Section 11's yesterday. So um, I think it's important to understand that um, all of sports in Suffolk County right now is a very fluid situation and uh, decisions are being adjusted and made as they go. So I'm going to give you the information that I have as of about 4.30 this afternoon. But I know that it's going to change, you know, slightly. So, um, you know, all low and moderate risk sports um, were cleared and they started play on January 4th. Now, we have certain regulations in place that we have to follow. Um, so for us, um, low, uh, for us, the uh, moderate risk sports are winter track and field and bowling. And we've already had uh, meets and competitions in both of them. Um, 
we've won some, we've lost some, uh, both our boys and our girls. Um, you know, so uh, we had one home, one away. A lot of them are on weekends now just because of the way the schedule falls out over the eight weeks. Um, but it's nice to have a good group out there. On Tuesday, January 26th, um, Section 11 met and they approved play for all of the remaining sports. These are the sports that they re, uh, deem high risk. I'm not a fan of the title high risk sports because it's really high risk to exposure. It's not, it has nothing to do with the sport. It's, you know, and I think that sometimes the way that that phrase is used in the media, um, you know, creates a scenario where there's a, a misunderstanding about it. They're, they're higher risk for exposure to COVID because there's more contact between students and there's more contact between um, materials that students touch. So those sports were approved with a set of guidelines <clears throat> and they'll be starting um, on February 1st, which is next week. So uh, there is not really a great deal of time for us to organize and plan all this. We did have a, a good amount of it planned already, but um, for this particular season, um, that means um, three sports for us. Um, that's basketball, cheer, and wrestling. Those are the, this is the winter season for sports. They decided to go winter, fall, uh, spring, then fall. Winter, fall, then spring. What was it? Um, I think yeah, it was winter, fall, and spring is the order they chose to go in. So for us in the winter season, we have basketball, uh, both boys and girls. We have competitive cheer, and we have wrestling. Um, so those will start on February 1st. They will only go for four weeks. For any of these sports in this um, high-risk category, you have to be tested weekly. Um, the tests will be done by our nurses. Our nurses have already completed the online training for it. Um, you know, we, like I said, we started this process a while back. The only part of the process that, to um, conduct the testing that we have not completed is the fit testing. They have to do fit testing of masks, and it's not offered until Monday is the first day. They're offering it for 10 days at the Suffolk County uh, Police Academy. Our people, all five of our people that are uh, either nurses or nurses aides, are signed up to go. Um, but again, that doesn't start till Monday. Um, you know, so as early as Monday afternoon, it's possible we'll be testing. But um, I, you know, I don't know if they're going to get us tests that quickly. Who, who has to be tested? Anybody who plays the high-risk sport has to be tested every week. Coaches as well? And coaches, yes. So it's players and coaches? Yes. Coaches and players in the high-risk sports have to be tested weekly. You know, um, I mean, I've, I've expressed my opinion about the fact that I'm not overly fond of testing at school. I'm less fond of testing um, with the tests that we use. They're the least reliable. Um, and then creating an image of safety. It's Look, it's safer testing every week, but the other six days we're not testing, so <laughs> it's good for that day. Um, but these are, the, these are the guidelines we're given. We want to give kids opportunity to play sports, so we follow the guidelines that we're given. Um, and really, that's the long and short of it. So Section 11 approved uh, a motion to not have modified winter one or winter two sports modified as a fancy word for middle school um, they did ask for votes our vote was to have it you know we felt like if we're going to be doing it we had prepared to do it and we would prefer to give our kids the opportunity but as a section and as a county the motion was um, put up it was voted on and it carried um, so that they have decided that they will not be having um, modified or middle school sports for either of the two winter seasons that means the earliest middle school sports could start would be March. Middle school is different than high school. It has four seasons instead of yeah. three. You know, they have a fall, spring, and early winter, and a late winter. Right. Um, so, you know, the, 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 they're talking about doing the fall and the spring in the spring, but they have not made any final decisions on it. But as of right now, middle school, school sports will not run. We'll probably, we found this out last night, so we haven't had a great deal of time. Uh, to organize from that, but we're talking about the possibility of doing a middle school intramural program so that our middle school kids do have access to something. So Maybe some of the thought process on that is it's inside and the cleaning would be very difficult because it's such tight, it's hard to get usage, yeah. usage of the space in the best of times. I can't imagine. Could be. Um, I, I'm not privy to a lot of the thinking, you know, like we, we're doing winter sports outdoors right now. Right. Except for the ones they just approved to start on, um, February 1st, those are actual indoor sports. And that was the reasoning at the beginning for not doing them. 
you know, why it changed, I don't know. Um, you know, other states did all sports, and then other states did no sports. It's really been a myriad all over the country. I don't know there really is a great answer for it. You know, upstate played fall sports. Um, you know, they had fall sports upstate in a lot of, uh, a lot of the counties. So, you know, what we'll have to focus on is, um, you know, what we're given right now. So there will be no middle school sports. There will be high school sports. Students in the, in the high risk category will have to test weekly. The first test will have to be done by February 8th because that's the first, um, that's going to be the first competition. There's only four weeks left in the eight week season and they did not overlap. So those particular sports will have four weeks, which means after their six days, when they're typically eligible to play, they're gonna have competitions. Um, let's see, testing will be conducted by our nurses, all forms, all forms that we'll utilize. There's multiple forms that both the county uh, says you have to sign off daily and then, uh, or you have to sign off for the season. Um, and then the, the um, you know, the, the forms from parents to allow us to test their children and all of those um, we're working on in an online format. They'll all be sent home before the weekend so parents will have access to them um, prior to Monday's start. Um, the 21 se uh, 2021 seasons will be as follows. January 4th to February 27th is, is uh, the, the fall season. March 1st to May 1st is the spring season. And then April 26th to June 19th is, is the... Um, I'm sorry, winter. Winter, was, winter is January 4th to February 27th. Fall is March 1st to May 1st, and spring is April 26th. Wait, what's fe wait, wait. What's February 1st, then? That's when it's actually beginning. That, that's half it of was this season. For, so it's January We're, 27th through... January 27th. Through February 27th. Through February... January 4th through February 27th. But it got canceled. Where okay. they didn't start a handful okay. of them starting a handful of them in the middle. So that first eight-week season of January 4th Only to February weeks. 27th. Is the, is the winter. Yeah, it's seven weeks, I think. That, that is the winter season. And then fall season is 3-1 through 4-1? May, uh, no. Um, the fall season is March 1st to May 1st, yes. To May 1st. And then 426 to 619. Spring season is 426 to 619. So those will be full, more full seasons. So. Excuse okay. me? Okay. If you have kids that, play, that are going to play in the fall and spring. They, they don't go overlap. Up. They'll go. They don't. The seasons don't overlap at this point but in time. The, well, no. five days they do. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. The seasons will only overlap for a couple of sports. They told us. But I have to tell you, this is as of today. Last week, these were different dates. It'll change. These It'll week, change. last week, there were eight seasons that ran consecutively and nothing overlapped. Now they, for some reason, and I don't know why, because we didn't get the answers, they gave us new dates today, but they said that only a couple of the sports will overlap for practice purposes because, for instance, football, you have to have more practice days before you can play a competition. You know, you have to have like six days before you can be in pads, then you have to have six days before you can play. So it's 12 days before you can have a game. Whereas in, in a sport like baseball, it's six days before you can have a game. So. I believe they added some days for that sport in these things. But if they overlap and you're playing one sport, so let's say you play on the basketball team during a regular year, basketball goes to states, and that overlaps with mm -hmm. the next season, your playing for basketball counts for practices, practices towards practice. the other season. It always has. So the overlap won't penalize kids because that... Will be that, season yeah, that practice. short overlap for those few seasons... Um, should not they're telling us it will not or should not penalize any kids I but but again days. i'd be surprised if yeah, it doesn't exactly. change you know i don't i'd, I'd be very surprised if it doesn't change between yeah. now and, and when we actually right, but start the, her soccer will count right, as her right, right exactly yeah, yeah. Um, so you know this is the information we have right now as far as um you know there was a lot of conversation about it i think that if middle school sports did run a lot of places would not have done it um the fact that Section 11 made the decision to do that, at least it's a unified decision. Um, as of this afternoon, Section 11 informed, you know, we asked them about um, what high schools were not participating in sports. Um, as of now, the only two Suffolk County high schools that they know of, East Hampton is not going to be doing wrestling, and Sag Harbor has told them that uh, they're not going to be doing basketball, but then they've also said we might be doing basketball. So they're not doing basketball. 
I happen to know the varsity coach. I know, but I heard <laughs> that that might be changing. No. As of as of last night, they were, or actually earlier this afternoon, yeah. Pearson, yeah. Uh, their administration decided not to do any of them, uh -huh. with my understanding. Yeah. Not so, just basketball, it was the, all of the sports. So I could tell you um, what Section 11 told us today, and again, if they were going to cancel sports for other seasons, I think that Sag Harbor only has basketball for this season coming up. Okay. So section probably only took that cancellation. They may have decided that they're going to do more, but section probably wouldn't yeah. take it yet. They yeah. probably would say, look, in four weeks when we get closer, tell us what you're going to do with those seasons. Because the truth is that um, this is an ever-evolving decision. You know, as, as, you know, as um, quarantines go on and as uh, positives pop up and as numbers go up and down, the decision for people to play and how much of a team has to be quarantined and those types of things change people's perception of it. So I can tell you in the two days that we've been doing it, it's changed about four times. Well, I have a few questions. Sure. Um, would now be a good time? Yes, now's a good time. So they're going to play for a few weeks and they're going to have winter recess for a week off in February? They, uh, Without a concern that after the break there might not be a spike in cases? I, it, the timing just doesn't make no. sense to me but as you say I know it's ever changing but it's at the foot so that week when schools out there'll be no sports no, no testing uh, then or there will be no, no. typically typically sports take place over winter recess there, that's usually playoffs though in most sports cases that February break is usually playoffs yeah I, th I think there and I would have to find out for sure and I'll let you guys know uh, in the update but I believe they're scheduling sports over break okay and do we have um, participants for all of these sports enough to field teams or is there the one team that i identified um yeah that's spring that's in the spring yeah, right okay no i'm talking the, about these yeah. ones right now bless you. bless you well some of them are shared like we share um wrestling right um and i my understanding is that we don't have a lot of participants but we're not going to be doing the wrestling anyway because it's junior high and there's no junior high sports wrestling um is a oh, winter we traveled sport. to mattatuck right yeah. for that okay. yeah so um so I, the answer is yes. We okay. do have participants in all of them. A number of our participants, um, they joined a different team because theirs wasn't running. Um, they've been notified, and you know the coaches have been wonderful. They've told them, look, I understand that that's the sport you love. If you're not going to be with me anymore, I wish you well. You can stick, oh, with, me, stick okay. with us for the rest of the week and then go join your sport when it starts next week. There are some kids that want to do dual sport, which League Four, Division Four allows. That was something that was new to me because, um, you know, they don't allow it in Division One. You can't be a full athlete in two sports. You can be, you can, you can be an athlete in one sport and a minimal participant. So, like, a soccer player can kick in League yes. One. But here, you can play soccer and football. They allow you to do, you know, like, because of the size of the teams and the schools, they allow participants in this division to participate in more than one sport during a season. So that's relatively new to me. <coughs> we had at least one student athlete that asked for that. And the coach that he's with now said, no problem, we'll work it out. And uh, will spectators be allowed at these events? Section 11 is not allowing any spectators at any of them. We're looking at ways to try to live stream so that people can watch, um, they can watch their kids compete and their friends can watch their friends. So, um, you know, I know Steve is looking into that now so that we can try to do some of those things. The home matches, you know, it would be difficult for us. Anybody, any other questions? Again, a lot of this stuff is coming down the pike right now. So um, as we get more information, I'll share. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. That, you were done with your report, Dr. Morrow? Excuse me? That's it for the report? That's it, yes. Um, Thank I, you. Can I, can I, ask, I guess now would be a good time to, I know we're going to be doing a um, spring musical. Is it going to be done the same way that the fall production was done? No. Um, we'll be, um, the musical, we have to have more kids in to practice and work on it. So it won't be done as separated as the fall one was. You can't, we can't do a musical in that way. Um, we're talking now about, we don't have as many kids that participate in the musical, uh, traditionally they tell me. So 
they've looked at numbers over the last handful of years. They say there's approximately. No, we usually have more kids. the opposite. Straight in the musical. The musical's so way they, more they children. Because they usually have like a chorus. You know what I mean? Like they have ensemble. All the yeah. Ensemble. So they, they, they tell me there's approximately 25 students in the show. Okay. So what we've looked at is they're doing multiple shows. So we're trying to see if there's a way that we could figure out to ha uh, how to have um, assigned live participation for the families of the kids in the show. So, you know, you might get four tickets each or something like that. It will also be streamed, you know, so that people can watch it like that, like the um, fall show was. But the students that are participating will be socially distanced with the number of students involved in a musical. Yeah. We're gonna, they're going to be socially distanced. Um, you know, the, the, it's, everything is different this year. So, for instance, you might have four on the stage or five on the stage or six on the stage, and you might have others down here. Um, and just like you saw in our place, they were acting at this distance, um, and they'll be, they'll be singing at the 12-foot distance because that's the requirement for singing. And, um, you know, so it will be, it will be different, but, it, but um, you know, it'll be, it'll be the best we can do under the guidelines we have. And the kids are working on the modifications, which is nice. And, um, you know, but we plan on, it, we plan on bringing in both cohorts to practice it because you can't, it's kind of like a team. We equate it to sports. You know, a musical is um, an interlocking of a bunch of moving parts that come together to make one machine. That's the same way a sports team works. So we can't practice sports in cohorts where one is in one day and one is in the next because then when you put them on the field to compete together, the parts don't fit because they haven't practiced. So when we do sports, if your cohort is in today, you come in at the end of, uh, you come in from school and you go right to practice. If your cohort is not in, you come in to this entrance and the trainer is there and she checks your temperature and you have to do your attestation like you would normally for everything else. The musical will, will um, proceed similarly to that. Now when we're out there running track, our kids are socially distanced. Now are they socially distanced all the time? None of us are socially distanced all the time, ever. You know, but they're not spending long periods of time lumped together. No, but they're outside. That's and they're huge, outside, that's which is nicer, difference. yeah. That's yeah. a huge difference. It's a big difference. You know? will, will the students involved in the production have to be tested like the athletes are tested? They don't. You know, the Section 11 is the one that... I have some uh, concerns yeah. about the numbers in a musical in this... Setting? This setting on a daily basis. That, so that, that's we can my, look at you know, what the numbers are. Um, depends on what the numbers are. I, I just don't know yeah. how they're, like you say, with the singing, it's got to be 12 feet, not 6 feet. And yeah. I, I, We're allowing wrestling. I know. I, I, you know, some, so I, I really wouldn't sweat it. There's just some I'd rather say, oh, sorry, yeah. you know, if they get within 10 feet to sing. Let's let as the kids be know, creative well, we'll, and be kids. Well, no, I, I agree with you, but I think as long as we know what our responsibilities are as a district. Yeah. And that the families and the kids know what the responsibilities are. Yeah. Similar to the, uh, you know, the letter I sent out today yeah. indicated all the changes that we'd be making. Um, so I'll find out and make sure that, um, I'll make sure that everything is very transparent with everybody that's participating and that, that you guys understand exactly. If the number's 25, I just know that there's been how many yeah. musicals in the past? Like. They tell me the musicals are absolutely fantastic. Oh, they're amazing. I'm amazing. Looking forward. Amazing. Yeah, I'm really looking forward oh, to Oh, yeah. It. Yeah. yeah, no, but he, there may be lower numbers than we've seen in the past, just the because production. our enrollment is lower yeah, as well. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean we're, we, there have been times when we had higher enrollment hey, where we've had I'm 40 talking. kids, you know, up on stage. Yeah. So, but if it's around 25, then, then it's different. Yeah. Then, yeah. It's absolutely different. Okay. So. As I said, I'm in favor of all of it. I just think we need to... On, on, yeah. Can I piggyback on that? Would it, will a team like a robotics be allowed to bring their kids in? Yeah. Robotics has already been notified that... Um, they can bring them in. They're already doing it. I was just with them. Right, but I mean with um, non-cohorted for robotics thank you. Th club. Th that yes. word. That word. Yeah. Non-cohorted. And they follow the same guidelines. Yep. I mean, the reality is that in four or five weeks, we're hoping to be non-cohorted for everything. Anyway. Yeah. Right. Right. So, okay. Um, that's the goal. So they have to follow the same guidelines. Um, right. right. Okay. You know, and and they put out. Um, I'm on a curriculum council listserv, which is countywide, and you know you put out questions on the curriculum council listserv because I sit on the curriculum council. I have for probably about six years now. And um, it's a, a myriad of principals, assistant superintendents, teachers, and about a week and a half ago, someone put out, you know, 
who's looking to bring kids back or has brought kids back. And I found it very surprising that about half the county has either brought kids back or is in the middle of a plan to bring kids back. Pretty much everybody is at this point in time, you know, especially your kids that have, have more needs than others. Um, but the truth is, I think all of them need, um, you know, our numbers are going down. I, I hope, and I think that one of the hopes of everybody is that the February break won't be, um, people will have learned from the holiday break and the February break will not be as damaging and the numbers hopefully won't change as much. Um, but as of today, our numbers are, are going down. We're down three points from when we came back to school. Um, and, you know, people are getting vaccinated. And so we're starting to bring kids and, and, and adults and everybody back in, you know, and that's, that's the hope. So, yeah, the robotics club, um, you know, uh, and then we're speaking with, you know, RTC to see if it's better or worse. You know, RTC is tougher because they're in the morning. We don't want kids to have to come here, participate, and then run home and be late for their class. And so we're looking at it now, and, you know, we'll talk to them and see. But the truth is, if if their needs warranted non-cohorting, we'd be at the point where we would look to non-cohort that program, too. Okay. You know, so. Non-cohorting. <laughs> yeah, you know, who would have thought we'd talk about cohorts? What is, and what is robotics doing for their competitions? Are they going to do them virtually? Uh, so they have there's five a, options. Yeah, they, yeah there's a, they have three different competitions. One is a virtual at home where they have the robot do tasks and, and they have to time it and show what they've done and record videos and they're placed in a um, pod of with 30 other teams from all over the world. So so you still have a, a competition and then you see how you do with that. Then there's another challenge which is an innovation challenge and that's you know design something to solve a real world problem. We're probably not going there. And the other one is a game design challenge where they, you can design a game for potentially first to use in the future. Really? Yeah, so I, we have some, some students that have grabbed that. So, yeah, so there's, you know. So I mean, they've adapted. Yeah, and it's uh, using last year's robot and last year's game oh, because that's... they didn't get to use it. So they've made some, some changes, but so that's what we're doing. Oh, that's right. That was right when this all. But yeah, they were up in Rochester and came home. The game idea is all over the white wall in the library. You know, they, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. they split the area. They work in both the robotics yeah, yeah, rooms yeah. and the library because they can dis they can separate yeah. better. So, like, the wall of the library, I was in there, yeah, uh, there. this morning, and they yep. have all their game ideas. We got permission to keep it up. So. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it was up this morning. So uh, it's a good opportunity for them, and it's a great program. Yeah. Cool. That's Dr. good Ron, stuff. Just a question. Yes. Um, so I'm, I'm an athlete, and, like, I, I, of course I want sports to come back, and I'm really uh -huh. excited about that. But... Uh, so is there is there an option to to get our like the people in the musicals and stuff tested like our athletes because I feel like because I'm an athlete and I first yeah. want that for priority but I feel like it's a little uh -huh. unfair to like people like them like yeah. that's what they look forward to and they can't really put on a good show because they'll have to be yeah. separated and well there's there's definitely options for it I don't think it would allow them like even in sports um, with the exception of when you're competing you're supposed to be separated the whole rest of the time um, I think the biggest push for testing with sports is the fact that it's a um, inter-school, they're inter-school competitions. You know, I think that the, the concern, like when we did intramural sports, we didn't test kids, but that's because they were our, you know, they were the kids that were here every day. Um, you know, so now that our kids are going out and there might be a day on a Saturday where they compete against five other schools, that multiplies your risk factor by five, you know, so I think that has something to do with it. Um, but I guess, I'm, is your question, would we, would we have the ability to test kids in the musical so they can do it differently or just so, so that we can so test can, them? So they can do it in a way that they have to pass. Yeah, I don't know. I would, I would have to talk with them. They actually proposed this to me. So in other words, they could be. You know, they came to me and said, this is, you know, we've looked at the musical, we've talked with our kids, and this is what we're looking at doing because um, we think we can do a good musical. So I don't know if it would change the way they wanted to do things or... It may give, I think that's a great you know, question or suggestion, yeah, though. I can check. If, if, they, if they agree to be tested, then they could do it like in the past, like you're, you're suggesting. And doing a live audience could work because their tickets already are preceded. Mm -hmm. So if they wanted to have the, them, the yeah. speak, you know what I mean? You could I say, know. we're yeah. only selling these. Yeah. You know, we've spoken about it. We didn't marry to it just because 
we don't know what three months. You know, we're talking about May, like yeah. it's a long time from now, yeah. and we don't know what the Maybe scene. The world will be normal then. Yeah, <laughs> you know, but the reality is, this is big enough that if you do two performances and you split your group in half. You and they so do they do three generally sometimes they do three Friday Saturday and they, Sunday. Yeah, they may be doing three for Friday, some reason. Friday Saturday Sunday. I don't know if two was in my head for some reason, but I can. Usually be wrong. it's Friday Saturday and Sunday. I don't have the notes in front of me, but um, either way, we could divide up that group and give them all their little spaces, and they could come and and you know watch the competitions, or watch the show, and still be spaced. Right. And you know our show is not under the purview of like Section Eleven. Right. Section right. Eleven has decided no visitors. Whether we have visitors or not right. here would be about whether we can accommodate them in a way that's uh, safe. Right. You know, so. right. right. But it's a good question. I'll look into it and see if it would change things. If we're going to be doing the testing, it's going to and change it every. Week. People are interested. What do you think in Section Eleven is going to yeah. change every day? I have concerns about the testing. Can't see. How do you stop somebody from you know, the um, gate? We have kids that, that were positive in the last couple of weeks, and I haven't gotten an answer. Or in the last month, they may test positive. You know, they have the ability to test positive for up to 90 days, I'm told, by the Department of Health. Um, I don't know, like, nobody knows if they test positive, what do we do with them? Um, they don't allow retests. We're using the least, um, in my opinion, we're using the least reliable test. But if you go get the most reliable test and it shows that you're negative, even though you are positive, Section 11 won't reverse, you're out for 10 days, period. You know, so I have some concerns and questions that haven't really been answered, but you know, uh, kind of like everything else this year, it, we'll work forward and, you know, we'll try to put everybody in the best position we can. You're, so. you're out 10 days from your positive test date? Section you, 11? If you is test positive, you're out 10 days from your positive that's, test, which is what the... Um, that's what, like, my employees... That's what the same. Department of Health would right, do. Right, right. My concern is that, like, when, when, when I take a rapid test, I then take the three-day, the longer test, the P, uh, PCR. 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 If my PCR comes back negative, they say you had a false positive and I go back to society the next day. Um, we're not, they're not doing that. If you get a negative on the tests that we give, you're a positive on the tests that we give, you're positive. Regardless of what the PCR Regardless of what anything else shows. You know, you can go get a blood test and you're still going to be positive for the 10 days you're out. That's the way they're doing it. And I, un I understand why they're doing it that way. They're talking about thousands of kids around the county. It would be unmanageable for them to do it any other way. It really would. But I just, you know. But for purposes of school, we don't need to do it that way. Um, school, we don't need to test at all yet. I think they. No, but if no, I tested, yeah. yeah. Oh, if, if we were doing our show, place, no. You know what I mean. So if a student tested yeah. positive in a rapid because of sports, but then tested yeah. negative in a PCR. What about if a student has already been positive? COVID? That's part of my problem. I haven't gotten an answer on that. Yeah, because for 90 days you can test positive. Right. Exactly. Now, now it's interesting because some people after 14 days don't test positive, right, but, but others they say up to 90. Like my son, when he goes back to college, he doesn't have to do his weekly tests for the first 90 days. Because he was positive. He was positive last week. He doesn't have to do his, you know, two weeks ago he was positive. And that, so yeah, we that need to find out if they're going to around. allow them to play after they test positive. Excuse me? You're going to have to find out if they have to continue to test then. Yeah. The, and the I have athletes. to find out if they tested positive three weeks ago, do they have to test? Right. You know, Section 11's guidelines, uh, Suffolk County's guidelines are slightly different than CDC and the rest of the world. Like the CDC says 90 days that you don't have to test, 90 days that you um, don't have to quarantine, 90 days, you know, you can't be a close contact for 90 days. Where in Suffolk, it's only 30 days. So if I have a student or an adult or anybody that was positive, and they did their 10-day isolation, and then a day later they came into contact with someone who was positive, they would not have to quarantine. They do that for up to 30 days. Whereas outside of Suffolk County, if you're going by the CDC guidelines, they do it for 90 days. They're assuming that you have antibodies for 90 days. Yes. Yeah. Okay. There are people that say, you know, there are some studies that say you have the antibodies for nine months. Right. But 90 days is what pretty much the standard is when you're looking at many of the health organizations. Suffolk adopted 30 days. And Suffolk and Nassau sports have two different things, too, because I don't think Nassau is requiring testing. Two different sections. Yeah, no, most, I know. Most no. places are not requiring yeah. testing. Um, who's, who's paying for the testing? Uh, the, the testing is all paid for. As long as you do the training that we did, and as long as you um, sign a, what do they call it, an LSL 
to work under, we're going to be working under Dr. Pidgett's license. So our nurses will be working under his license. Everybody was given the option to sign that agreement. We, we opted in quite a while ago. It was a verbal opt-in. They sent it to me. I actually signed it today. Um, and as long as you do all that, then, then the Department of Health provides you with the tests. There's no cost to anybody. Um, our nurses do it. They, it's rapid. You put it, it's, you know, it's kind of like a pregnancy test. You put it in the thing and then the line comes up or doesn't come up. You know, that's the way, that's the way it's mine worked I when I tested a couple weeks ago. Um, so, you know, that, that is all covered. None of it has to be paid for. No insurance is taken. We don't even ask for insurance information when we do our, um, you know, our releases to test kids. Ooh, I'm sorry. The question is, you know, will they get us all tests when we need, you know, like, it's hard enough to get tests. Now you're talking about testing tens of thousands of kids every week. But they need to get to us by Monday. And well, today is Wednesday. They need, we need them by the 8th. So yeah. we, need them, we need to have our kids tested. But the reality is, like, we decided we would test on Mondays because our competitions are typically later in the week in this schedule. And if someone can't participate, you don't want to tell the coach that your starting center can't participate tonight because we tested them today. Right, right. You'd prefer to tell them that five days ago, let them prepare another child to play. Right. Um, so that's what we would like to do, but we don't have tests as of now. We'll ask for them tomorrow. Um, and I don't know how this will work. You know, yeah, we know I, you don't have the answers to a lot of the questions. <laughs> yeah. Judy wants to know who the doctor who's, who's is. Who's Dr. Pidgeon? Dr. Pidgeon is the Commissioner of Health. Commissioner of Health for Suffolk County. For Suffolk County. <laughs> okay. So we're doing it under his license. His license, any, any school district that chose to test on their property. We could have contracted out and paid for tests for a company to come. Right. Uh, okay. we, could have, um, we could have asked, like, Stat Health or right. City MD okay. if they would test our kids and we would pay whatever the, the amount, you know. But the rules are that if a school is testing or having somebody tested, like if we were a yellow zone and we had to test, you can't put people in a position where they have to pay for tests. Right. The right. district right. either has to pay for it or the county has to pay for it. So, you know, our option, the option we chose was we have five um, medically trained people between nurses and nurses' aides on property. The tests can be given by a student. There's students upstate that are giving themselves the test. You know, it's not an incredibly complicated, it's a shallow nose swab. And um, our nurses will be doing it and, and doing the testing, and then we have to upload the results into the state system. Gotcha. Okay. So. All right. Yep. We'll check our update Friday for all the changes between now yeah, right? and the next, four, <laughs> in the next 48 hours. <laughs> yeah, I can't give up. Just highlight the changes between yeah, I think it's just, you know, you 8 o'clock on Wednesday and Friday when we get our update. Yeah. Thank you. We know that, as I said, that you don't have the answers to the questions because nobody's got the answers to the questions. Okay. That, that's the conclusion of your report, unless we ask any more dumb questions. That brings us to personnel. We've got, now I'm going to skip down. Are we going to remove these junior high coaching positions then, since there's going to be no junior high? Or table it or? You can table them, but you don't have to. Um, you know, we, um, I met with the SFA today. And we came to agreement, and, and in the MOA, it very clearly states that if a season does not run, then, then um, the, coach, the coach does not get paid for it. So we'll just mention the ones that we know we're going to have for now, right? Is that, does that make sense, guys? Yeah, because if there's no basketball, volleyball, or wrestling, just... I mean, I you would, could table, quite honestly, all the junior high ones, if you like. Right, that's what I'm thinking. Okay. And if we can, yeah, if we do the other high school ones so that we all can right. get those people Okay, so, so I make so, a motion we'll, that we table the junior high coaches. And the junior high um, scorers as well. Then. And the junior high scorers. Okay, so you know what we'll do? We'll call out by that. name. Yeah, I'll, I'll, okay. So we have some substitute aides and the coaching positions for this 2021 20, winter season, I guess we're calling it. Varsity Bowling, Alex Sinclair is replacing Mr. Carver, who was approved last meeting. Girls Varsity Competitive Cheer is Alyssa Basso. Boys Varsity Basketball is Lucas Gregonis. Boys Varsity Basketball Assistant is Joseph Irwin. Boys JV Basketball is Richard Pisicano. Um, and Girls Basketball is not fitting into this. There's no girls. Excuse me? There's no girls basketball? There's no girls basketball? Girls Varsity? Oh, right, Greenport. My dad. You're right. Sorry. Sorry. Thanks, Patty. 
And then we've got scoreboard operators, boys and girls basketball, Audrey Grathall, Jeff Ellis, Lori Mara, and Mike Carver. We don't need the junior high basketball, and we don't need the junior high volleyball, correct? And then the athletic trainer, Alyssa Kluber, which I thought we had approved last meeting. We approved her, but we forgot to put her um, salary on. Oh, okay. We okay. found out that we had to put her salary okay. on. Okay, and that's per season, and it's prorated depending on how long or short the season may yeah. be. Yeah, yeah. And okay. her, hers, we haven't fully figured out the prorating. Because but this is approving her for the remainder of the school year? Yes. Okay, yes. perfect, yeah. perfect. Okay. Is there a motion to accept the superintendent's recommendations, as we just mentioned? So moved. Judy, a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay, now we uh, need a motion to approve the district comprehensive improvement plan. Uh, the plan is a fluid document that will be that will evolve and be utilized for the remainder of the school year. Did you need? Did, we don't need to speak to this because you explained it. I think. Yeah, I explained it all pretty yep. well. Is there a motion to approve the comprehensive improvement plan? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, finance committee report. No. Building committee report. Nothing to report. Policy committee report. Nothing. New business. We covered all the new business in the superintendent's report, probably. Um, second hearing of visitors. At this time, we will listen to any kind of comments or questions. Does anybody care to address the board right now? Can I just state your name there, please? Doreen McFarland. Just a question. With varsity basketball and JV, is Greenport sport, how are we going to bust them? Are they going to be tested in-house uh, in South Hold? And how are we going to get information from Greenport on how the scheduling and so forth is going to work? Yeah, so there'll be um, schedules and everything will come through our athletic department like it always has. They, those, both, all three athletic departments have been in uh, contact regularly. Um, when it comes to testing, we're deferring the testing um, to the guidelines of the school that hosts. So if we're hosting soccer and we test on Mondays, then we will test students from all those places on Mondays. Um, so, you know, the testing will be in line and they're still, we're all still working out our testing guidelines because we don't know when we're going to get tests, you know, and, and so there's a lot of questions out there so about it. So if we don't it. get the tests, what does that mean for I us don't on know. February 8th? <laughs> uh, I don't know. That's not our fault. It's not the kid's fault. You're right. You know, having a senior athlete I got basketballs running around my house that you know, I'm trying to maneuver yeah. around. So, you know, I don't want to disappoint them and say, February 1st, all right, we're ready to go. Let's get going. We're going to get a practice schedule. That, um, I have nothing. And we've never heard nothing like we except for on the news. Well, there's, I mean, there we just don't know the answer. Yeah. No, I know. There but, doesn't need to be a test to start. Yeah. The requirements that Section 11 gave us was our first test has to be before our first competition. Right. Not our first practice. Mm -hmm. So we're starting on the second, no matter what. Okay. Uh, and the, the county and the section, and I have no reason to doubt any of them, have told us that they would get us what they need to do our testing. Um, we've never done it. I don't have any reason to doubt them. The schools that have done it have gotten what they no, need. No, I think my you know yeah. concern is I don't want to give them something and then all of a sudden have to pull it away as, just as quick. But also, I don't know, you know, like I said, am I, are they being bused here or... But every school, you know? as far as the yeah. testing, will be in the same position. If they're saying they're going to get tests to the schools, if they don't get them to Greenport, they're not going to get them to Mad the other schools yeah. as well. Oh, absolutely. You, you know what I, I mean? No, I understand that. That part, that yeah. part of it, I would think. You know, it's possible anyway. if our... It, it, it's possible, and again, we haven't gotten this far in our conversations, but if our testing uh, days align, you know, we may test kids that are going to Greenport right here. Okay. Um, we may test kids, or Mattituck may test kids that are coming right because here. Because that's Greenport. my next question, is that we also, you know, girls' sports are com combined with both Mattituck and Greenport. So now, you know, again, the, you know, get the, getting them on yeah. a bus to there, I mean, is that yeah. all going to work through Yeah, that, Hold, the, the transportation part and all that, we've already worked through. Okay. You know, so that's not an issue. Okay. Um, you know, the testing part we are working through. Um, you know, we're, we did decide that, you know, you'll go with your testing guidelines okay. for, for the school that you're going to play at. And, you know, some are tighter and some are looser. Um, that may change if our testing guidelines and days are exactly the same and it's more convenient. 
uh, then we may test kids that will really be competing at another school at ours as long as we can comply and give those test results. But we don't know whether we can do any of that. Um, we haven't gotten that far. Like, we have to put it in the state system. Okay. So does that mean you have to be at the school that you're playing at to go into the state? So we don't really know the answers. And that's fine. I, I get that. I'm, yeah. you know, it's not I, like I it's understand. strange in New York that they <laughs> throw things out there, Doreen, with no follow-up. <laughs> Listen, they, you know, we've been home, yeah. you know. So we're going to work on those um, together. And, and like I said, you know, Steve um, has been in contact with them multiple times every day. Okay, good. I wouldn't, you know, like I said, we're just all listening to the news at this point. We haven't heard anything from the schools. So, um, you'll get something tomorrow. We have it. Um, we already have it prepared. We just wanted to make sure we answered any questions uh, tonight because this just happened yet on Tuesday. Right. So, you know, um, we wanted to put everything out at a board meeting and then we'll send everything out. Um, you know, our plan is tomorrow. It'll definitely be before the weekend because we're still working on a couple of the documents. Not only yeah, that, our normal February break, we do um, tournaments. So would that be something that would be able to be done if a school is willing to host it? I, I, I don't Usually, know. Usually, I think, go um, to Hampton Bays. Yeah. But they've. I don't know for sure, but I can tell you that many of those types of things, as far as, like, like our invitational track meets, instead of them, when we go compete in track meets, instead of them being like eight teams, they're two. Yeah. They've split them up into um, more locations with less teams. I haven't seen the schedules. Um, I think at this point, we'd be lucky just to get a couple games. Yeah, yeah. Get, listen, if they can practice together. February break, I have yeah. no issue. Yeah, if they're well, going mean, to be just able just to open the school so I don't, practice, I don't, I'm I don't okay think with that. Yeah, I wouldn't count on them, but I don't know for sure that we're not doing them. Okay. But the, you know, there's no county championships. Right. No, I heard no, that. No, like those those venues where you have, you and know, that's fine. They're not yeah, going to be competitive tons of teams enough. And they don't want like, multiple teams. They, they won't because yeah. we, we're such yeah. a small district, anyways. That we, you know, we only play a few teams. Yeah, so those so. things are not, you know, they're staying more geographic. But would they be able to practice during that February break? We're working on that school? now. Yeah, okay. I mean, tip. That's like, probably stuff from like Mr. Flanagan. You can't, right? you can't okay. go by the typical. Uh, Mr. Flanagan and I have met every day pretty much multiple times each day. You know, you can't really go by what the typical was. Um, oh, trust you know, me, I'm well aware of that. Yeah, not this year. <laughs> so. so Yeah, so we'll get all that information, including schedules, out to everybody. Okay, um, perfect. But, I mean, we this is um, – Section 11 announced that we'd be doing this yesterday afternoon. So we're about maybe 28 hours into it. And, um, no, they just announced Nassau. And again, like you said, they're not they even requiring that today the announced Nassau, I heard, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a tight window, but we'll get everything out. Um, so hopefully with Nassau not having to test, it'll help us get more tests. Could be. I hope so. I'm hoping. So that, so. You know, I'm sure the people that are making these decisions are doing it with the best of intentions. Absolutely. And, you know, and I'm sure that they've checked on a lot of these things. I don't see how it could work. I don't see how some of it works because I'm not in the organizing and working of it, you know, but um, the people that are doing it have done a lot of this stuff for a long time and, you know, they want our kids to be healthy and they want them to be safe. And, and um, so I'm sure when we call tomorrow to try to get tests for Monday, they're going to tell us exactly when they're coming and how we do Great. it. So I have Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Doreen. Can students that are doing fully remote learning participate next year? curricular activities yeah. they can it's not like homeschool students um, no it's not like homeschooling for us okay. it's still technically our school okay. I don't believe okay. we have now when we go to um, like when we're hybrid if today is my day to be in school and I don't come in and I do remote because I don't feel well I can't then come to practice right you know what I mean uh, just like in a regular year, if you're right. absent on Friday, right. you can't come to Friday night's right. game. Right. It doesn't right. work that way, you know. Okay. So, like, we have some of those rules in place, but we, but you know, a student is a full distance learning. They can participate on the sports Versus, team because I know if somebody's a homeschool student. Yeah. They cannot. Okay. Homeschool, they can't. Yeah. Okay. Angela, you have any? Want to come up? Okay. She's. <laughs> Alrighty. That brings us to our board member commentary, Mr. Masena down there. How's everything? Good. Uh, month kind of got off to a rocky start. A little bit. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, everybody, everybody's super fired up about sports coming back. Um, it's nice. Slowly, things are kind of getting a, a little bit closer to normal than they have been the last year. So, um, like I know, I remember the bowling team 
and it's been a blast just seeing everybody and, and, and being able to do something to keep ourselves occupied after school has been great. Um, <clears throat> I'm super excited for, I this is the first time hearing of, of basketball and wrestling and that stuff, and I'm really excited for them. They just announced it yeah, yeah. yesterday, so. Uh, I know, I can super. You can see a that. difference with the kids in school. Yeah, and I think especially it came, it came at the right time, because in, in a normal school year, coming back in January and February is tough. Because holidays are over, that middle of the year drag, and I think this is kind of the boost a lot of the students needed to uh, keep working hard and keep stay happy, stuff like that. I think that the fact that it's been taken away from us for a, a, a long time uh, kind of makes us appreciate it more. So um, yeah, I'm just I'm excited, and I think all the students are excited. It's a good time to be at Southwood. All right, keep up the good work. Scott? Nothing. John? Very well said. And it's always a good time to be in Southold. I was lucky enough to move here in 94, and I have not regretted it for a minute. And um, very exciting to see things slowly getting back to normal. And um, just very proud of our community, our staff. I mean, all things considered, we've we've done all right here. We really have, you know. And things are going to get better. You heard it from John Crane. <laughs> Brian. Thank God. He's starting to come back to normal. I mean, these kids need to go to school and they need to play sports. So, you know, um, I know it's... It's one step forward, two steps back for, for the administration, but uh, you guys have been doing a great job. Appreciate it. Uh, can't wait to see the kids play again. Judy. Same. I agree. I think we have to remember the things we talked about, like in April and May and June last year, about being patient and being um, cooperative because we don't know the answers to so many of the questions. And I'm sure that by tomorrow midday, the answers to the questions that we were given tonight are subject to change. And I guess we all just have to be appreciative. Brian, you said it well, the administration, you guys are changing on a dime, everything. Um, and I know, dare I bring up that we're starting budget season, and it makes me a little bit nervous this year knowing the condition that the state's in. And um, again, I'll ask for everybody's patience and cooperation in that, because I can't imagine, Mr. Scheid, it's going to be an easy process this year. Not that it's ever easy, but maybe a little bit more difficult this year. Um, I'm thrilled to see everything getting back to somewhat normal. And the only thing I would say is when you say something like things were taken away, sometimes I take that like we took things away from students, which we know we didn't do. And I think in this situation the past 10, 12 months, everybody's had stuff taken away um, that we've had to adjust to. And I think that you kids have done an amazing job adjusting um, to, you know, to the circumstances by staying positive and upbeat. And I go back to last year's graduation. We didn't think we'd have a graduation. And darn if we didn't have a really good graduation here at South Bowl. So I echo the, it's always a good day to be in South Bowl. Thanks for coming. See you next month, February 20, after break. After break. <laughs> at the end of our, at the end of our winter season, <laughs> we'll be having a board meeting. A motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor. Thanks. <laughs>